Electricity stopped working all of a sudden, yet nothing got broken. Weird error messages are popping off. You have no clue what's going on. We all have been there. Today we're gonna check out the two most common issues that can cause your electrical systems to completely stop working. The short circuit and max depth errors. It can seem a bit tricky, but as soon as we understand what causes those issues, it's always gonna be a breeze. So let's learn what they are and most importantly, how to fix them and prevent them from ever popping off again. My name is Hyperion and let's get started. First of all, the short circuit and max depth error is an in-game message that can occur on any electrical, industrial and even water system in Rust. But for the sake of this video, we will solely focus on the electrical part. So I have prepared three examples to help me demonstrate the different situations we can experience and the ways to get around them. Note that those are just examples and you would not be making circuits like this in game on purpose. Here we have a root combiner receiving power from a test generator. This power then gets passed into XOR switch. We can see that both the output and input of the switch is showing the error and no power gets passed through the switch. On input there is still 100 thrust watts coming in, but the output is at zero. Because the output is zero, none of the following components in the chain are receiving any power, therefore are not working. The short circuit and max depth errors are two different issues. Sadly, the game won't tell us which one is causing our current problem. In this example, we are looking at the short circuit. As the name already suggests, it signals that electricity is taking unintended path. By this unintended path, it's meant that power is getting looped back to itself, where it would be cycling endlessly. This is not allowed by Rust, so the whole connection gets disabled. So, how do we fix this? Right now, the connection is disabled because of the loop. By simply removing the wire that is creating our loop, we'll get rid of the error and power gets restored. The opposite of course still does apply. If power is looped again, we are back at square one. Let's move on to our second example. We are still experiencing the same issue as in the previous one. Looping of power. Only this time, as we can notice, only half of the circuit is without power. Our first light is on, while the second one is not. And if we get rid of the loop, both lights are now on. The actual loop is happening at the first combining component. Sadly, there is currently a bug that doesn't show it here. We only get to see the error message on the second combining component in the chain. In short, we could say that the first component is getting overloaded, while the second one is complaining and shutting down. Anyway, since we are on a ride with bugs... If the second combining component in the chain is an OR switch, it won't show the error message at all. This makes it more tricky to even realize there is a problem in the first place. This is currently a bug and hopefully Face Punch will fix it soon, but until that, we will have to deal with it. Again, simply by unplugging a connection creating the loop, we will restore the power flow as it's supposed to. You may ask, is there any other way to bypass this issue? Actually, yes there is. In this example, we have again the short circuit problem that doesn't show the error because of the bug, but it's still present. There is another rule that we can use regarding the short circuit. Short circuit only takes effect if the total amount of components involved in the loop is less than 9. Here we have 8 components connected in a loop and short circuit which is cutting out our power. We sadly don't get to see the error message here, but the power is still disabled due to the loop. To fix this short circuit, we can of course just unplug the connection which is creating the loop, but that sometimes may not be possible. For example, if we have sealed some components and we cannot get to them. So what is the previously mentioned bypass? We already know that the short circuit only takes effect if the total amount of components in the loop is less than 9. So we can abuse this rule by increasing the loop's length to 9 or more components. Here as we can see I have added a switch to the loop, which is the 9th component. The loop is still existing, but all the components are getting power and the switch is passing power through all the way back to the initial OR switch. 
As an interesting fact, the short circuit will also take effect if no power is flowing through a component. Just the possibility of it is enough to trigger it. So for example, it does not matter if there is a switch on the loop that's turned on or off. If I reduce the component amount back to 8, the loop will again short circuit no matter if the switch is passing power through or not. This will work the same with any kind of component that is not passing power through, but it's still connected to the loop. So, let's summarize the short circuit issue. It happens if power is looped back to itself. It can be fixed by removing the loop or increasing the amount of components in the loop to 9 or more. In practice, there is currently almost no benefit for looping power and it will only end up breaking your creations. So keep that in mind and try to avoid it if possible. With the short circuit part covered, let's dive into the other one. Usually, violation of the maximum depth rule is much more common than the short circuit. But what is depth in first place? When electricity travels from a power source into a root combiner, it may pass through other components or even multiple combiners. Each of those components count as one depth of connection. The more components power has to go through before it reaches the last root combiner, the deeper it will be. If the depth of connection exceeds a limit of 16 between the root power source and the root combiner, the root combiner will refuse to take this power in and display the short circuit and maximum depth error message. Again, by the message alone, Rust won't tell us directly if we are looking at the short circuit or maximum depth. So we will have to activate some gray matter and look into it ourselves. So let's go with the biggest offender of maximum depth, big central power core. In this case, we are looking at the PCN core with 9 power sources and 9 batteries. All our power sources are connected via root combiners that are wired in series, meaning one into the next one and so on. We are using 8 root combiners to combine 9 power sources in total. All of them combined are coming through a counter which is showing us the current amount of incoming power into our BCN core. Some of the power gets directly used by the core and the rest is distributed to our 9 batteries through a tree of splitters. Those batteries then go back into root combiners. But what is this? An error again? For sure we are not looping any power here, right? So what could be the issue? We are now experiencing violation of maximum depth, that's the second part of the error message. As mentioned previously, maximum depth means that the amount of connections from and including the root power source is more than 16. What we need to do now is to count the amount of connections manually, since Rust won't tell us. Let's start at the beginning of our chain, all the way from the root power source. And by root power source I mean the first one in the chain if we have multiple. So from our root power source, the power travels through 8 root combiners, passes through a counter and ends up in a branch. From here, the route splits into two, one that is branched out into a memory cell and then from this memory cell into an OR switch. The leftover passes through neighboring branch also into the same OR switch. Both of those routes have in this case the same amount of components. If our circuit has multiple paths of variable length, we always need to count with the longer one. Following our power line further from the OR switch into a splitter tree towards the batteries. The battery then passes its charge into a combiner tree all the way to the last one in our chain. So by this routing we can now clearly see that we are 3 connections over the maximum limit of 16. So let's fix it, shall we? Because we need to somehow eliminate 3 connections from this chain, the most obvious solution would be to cut on some power sources. But we for sure don't want to have less power. So, you may have noticed that the root combiner setup is different on the power sources compared to the combining of our batteries. Our power source root combiners are connected in series compared to the batteries that use the tree method. The tree method is significantly more efficient in the amount of depth it generates if we want to keep the same amount of components connected. Right now, we are at the depth of 9 on our last root combiner combining the power sources. But if we apply the tree method, let's see what happens. If we do a quick recount now, we have already managed to get the depth on our power source root combiners down from 9 to only 5. 
Now removal of power sources were needed at all and we could even go up to 16 power sources with the current setup while still keeping the depth of 5. Great, we have just fixed the issue completely. The error is now gone and the power is flowing as it's supposed to. If this solution still would not be enough, we can also look for components that can be cut without affecting the functionality of our circuit. For example, this counter is not necessary for the circuit to work. It's there just for us to see the current amount of power that is being generated. So cutting that one will again lower the depth between our root power source and the last root combiner. Also, keep in count components that you have may use to extend wire if you're for example taking power from wind turbine that is really far and use a splitter or another root combiner to extend the wire's length. So, let's see if you did pay good attention. Here I have prepared a little circuit. Let's assume that the most left root combiner is getting direct power from a single power source. Now I need to know what is the depth of this circuit at the last root combiner and which one is it? Let me know down in the comments. Feel free to join my discord link in the description if you have any questions or looking for like-minded people. And most importantly guys, remember, it sucks to suck. And I will see you in the next one.